الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه وجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه ورخلنا برحمتك فعبارك الصالحين وأخرجنا من ظلمات الجهل والوهم إلى أنوار المعرفة والعلم ومن وحول الشهوات إلى جنات القربات أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to our program today our weekly program on knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today insha'Allah we will look at the topic of not knowing Allah or not understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the right way leads to shirk so not knowing Allah the way we're supposed to know him or not understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way we're supposed to understand him could lead to shirk and in our next episode, inshallah, we will go into details as to what is shirk. So let us focus on this topic today so we can understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a bit more. But just to recap, we talk about a few things for the last few weeks. We talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being mighty, being majestic. He knows everything. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-khaliq. He's a creator, everything belongs to him, and he owns everything. And these are some of the concepts that we need to have in mind. To recap, everything belongs to Allah. He owns and he controls everything. Everything is Allah's, and not everything is Allah. There's a vast difference between that. One of them is actually a very good Islamic statement, and the other one is committing a major offense in Islam, and that's shirk. Like everything is God's, and not everything is God. When one says that everything is God's, it means that everything belongs to God. If one says that everything is Allah's, it means that everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of everything, and everything belongs to him. But if one says that everything is Allah, or if one says that everything is God, it actually contravenes and it contradicts the very first aspect of the statement. It actually means that you can find God in everything. You can find God in his creation. You can find God in the tree. You can find God in human beings. You can find God in the sky. You can find God in the clouds. You can find God in the house. You can find God in plants. You can find God in mercury. You can find God in every aspect of the creation. And that, that idea is a pantheistic idea. And it's a major, major offense in Islam. It's a major sin. It is shirk in Islam. For us to say that God or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in his creation. The mushrikun or the idolaters in the time of the Prophet وسلم, they committed shirk in a similar manner. Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُوا أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مشركون. And most of them do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except while committing shirk, while joining partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The mushrikun. The polytheist in the time of the Prophet وسلم, committed this aspect of shirk. How did they do that? You know, if you were to ask them, who created the heavens and the earth? Who created the sun? Or who made the sun and the moon subjected to human beings? They would say, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ and if you ask them, who created the heavens and the earth? 
they would say absolutely with great certainty Allah. they would say indeed it's Allah who created the heavens and the earth without an ayat of doubt the word that is actually used in the Quran Allah. Sayaqulun Allah has got a noon tawkeed, meaning that the noon in this verb actually entails emphasis. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing the fact because of the absolute certainty that they have, that they believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the heavens and the earth. But how come they committed shirk? How come they were guilty of polytheism? They were guilty of polytheism because they thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could not do it on his own. He needed some help to get that done. How is it possible that one God can do all of this? So they ascribe all of that to the 360 idols that they used to worship in the Kaaba. So they committed shirk in that sense, that the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is distributed amongst the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul, ma min He said, How can I consider what they invoke beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can I consider what you call upon? Besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنْ أَرَادَنِ يَا اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ هَلْ هُنَّ كَاشِفَاتُ ضُرِّهِ He said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended to harm me, can they actually save me from that harm? أَوْ أَرَادَنِي بِرَحْمَةٍ هَلْ هُنَّ مُمْسِكَاتُ رَحْمَةٍ And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended to give me mercy or show his mercy upon me, can they actually withhold the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? قُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ يَتَوَكَّلُ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for me and upon Him alone we put our, put the, put our trust. Upon Him alone rely the reliers. Literally means يَتَوَكَّلُ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ that those who put their trust, they put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exclusively in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is important for us to understand because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can help us at the end of the day. وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَسَخَّرَ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقُمْرِ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهِ يُؤْفِكُونَ and if you ask them who created the heavens and the earth and subjected the sun and the moon, they would say, certainly, it's Allah. Then how are they deluded? How is it they're deluded in such a manner they have deviated from the right path? They have deviated from the understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have deviated from the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed us to follow. Deviating from the way leads to shirk. And this is important for us to understand. So the polytheists in the time of the Prophet وسلم, they committed shirk by ascribing the power and might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his creation. Despite the Meccans and the, the confession of Tawheed and their knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has classified them as disbelievers, as kuffar, on pagans, mushrikud, because simply they worship other gods along with the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the ayat, or some of the ayat, that explain this inbuilt shirk in the minds of some people in built in the hearts of individuals who think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is deficient in some of his power and they ascribe or they put this power in the hands of his creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established the purpose of life so that we are commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to understand the purpose of life and in understanding the purpose of life 
is to recognize who is our master. And when we understand and we have recognized who is our master, then we ensure to obey the laws of the master. And obeying the laws of the master takes the form of worship and takes the form of halal and haram. Takes the form of the things that are lawful and the things that are unlawful. Recognizing, obeying, and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only master. And that means obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means commitment to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to understand the ayat of the Quran. This is what Iman is all about. This is what the conviction is all about. This is the conviction that we should have. And the conviction we should have in terms of Iman should be an expression from our tongues. It should be a verbal expression. And that should be coupled with confirmation from our hearts. And then that needs to be manifested in our deeds. Three major fundamental aspects of Iman. Al-Qawlu bil-Lisan which means verbal expression. وَالتَّصْدِيقُ بِالْقَلْبِ And conviction internally by the heart. وَالْعَمَلُ بِالْجَوَارِحِ And actively involve the limbs. Which means that whatever we say, it needs to be compatible with the ayat of the Qur'an. The way we have made that conviction on the thoughts and the ideas that we have needs to be compatible with the ayat of the Qur'an and the sound hadith of the Prophet Actively involve the limbs. That the things that we are involved in actively, the actions that we are involved in, they should all be according to the ayat of the Quran and the very authentic hadith of the Prophet. That is what is meant by these three fundamental aspects of Iman. Al Qawlu bil Lisan. Let me just go over that very briefly because I want us to memorize this and to understand it very well because these are the major parts of Iman. To understand that whatever we say, saying things could be aspects of shirk. Just by saying things. So we can commit shirk by our tongues. We can commit shirk by our hearts, by the thoughts that we foster by our hearts being convicted to things that are un-Islamic or faults that are un-Islamic. And we can also commit shirk practically by the things that we do. For example, if you were to say committing shirk by a verbal expression, you can say things, you know, that the weather is so horrible. Why is it like that? Which means you're questioning the authenticity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The natural features, you're, you're just questioning these things. And making a statement ridiculing the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an expression of shirk in itself. And these are things that we really need to appreciate. You might, you might also commit shirk by saying or even ridiculing the gender that you are in. If you're in the masculine gender, or the feminine gender, if you're a male or you're female. Any kind of abusing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why does he make me a male? Why does he make me a female? Why does he make me Asian? Why does he make me a Caucasian? Whatever it is, is ready to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as such, you find that we can easily commit shirk by the expression that we have. And likewise, we can harbor ideas in our thoughts and our mind that is thought to be Islamic. We can even do things with our limbs, with our hands, with our feet, our eyes, and these things to be totally on Islamic. And not only Islamic, but it can be tantamount to shirk in itself. So Iman, if we have the, the real sense of Iman, it should be obedience. Obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Submission to Him. With complete love, with complete submission. Because this is going to be another lecture when we talk about emotions itself. Because our love... Our fear, our hope, our supplication, our reliance 
should all be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these inward, outward expression that we have, they should all be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you imagine your love should be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Your fear should be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your hope should be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reliance should be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Supplication should be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every aspect of these emotions should be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't just say that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we obey Him, but then our reliance is on something else. We can't say that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we obey Him, and then our commitment is somewhere else. Our commitment should be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He knows everything. He knows everything that happens to us. And that is why He says in the Quran, وَلَقَدَ خَلَقَنَا الْإِنسَانِ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تَوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْغَرِيرِ صدق الله العظيم A very important ayah in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa says that indeed we have created insan we have created human beings وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تَوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ and we know what his soul whispers to him whatever whisper he whispers to himself Whatever thought he has got, whatever idea he has got, whatever happens within his internal system, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we have created you and we know what's happening to you internally. Externally as well, but he's emphasizing here, internally we know that because sometimes we can be forgetful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does know what happens to us internally. وَلَقَدَ خَلَقَنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تَوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ And we are closer to him than his jugular vein. Meaning that we are closer to him, not physically that we are closer to him, but the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he says, that we know what his soul whispers to him, but we are nearer to him than his jugular vein. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about knowledge. He is talking about the magnitude of his knowledge, the knowledge that he has got for all human beings. He's saying that even the things that you whisper, the thoughts that you have, we know all of it. Because we are indeed closer to you than your juggler veil. Nafsu wa nahnu aqrabu ilayhi min habli al-wareed. Of course, that's the wonderful quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we should not forget that all these qualities, they are all intertwined. So if you ask in the prayer, you only ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you seek help, you only seek of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek everything that we need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. Anything beside that would be an act of deviation, that we are deviating from the truth. We are deviating from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to do. Shirk also includes praying to the Prophet. Sometimes you might think that praying to Muhammad وسلم, is permissible. No, it takes you directly into Jahannam. The shirk includes praying to the Prophet وسلم. Anyone who worships Muhammad وسلم, goes straight into the fire of hell. It includes the so-called saints that we have. Or even praying to jinns and angels. There are some Catholics mistakenly believe that their priests are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to their piety. And they use them as intermediaries and thus listen more to them than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some Muslims have the same attitude as well. They think that some saint or some pious person can perform these acts because they're closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than anyone else. And thus they commit shirk by attrib uh, attributing certain qualities to them, and by devoting certain acts to them. You have some Shiites, some Shiite sects and groups have diverted certain days of the week and hours of the day for the prayer of Ali, or even Fatima, or Hassan, or Hussein, due to a distorted belief in intercession. There are some of them like that, not all of them, but there are some people like that, and so are some Muslims who claim to be Ahlul Sunnah or Jama'ah. They do the same thing. They end up doing certain acts that are totally un-Islamic and, and these acts are tantamount to shirk. And these are some of the things that we really need to be aware of. Because true worship and obedience, ibadah in the Islamic view, 
includes more than just fasting, paying zakah, and hajj. We should also think about love, trust, and the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes when there are events in the world today, we become so scared, we become so anxious, we become so worried. And we forget about the greatest worry that is worrying about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we forget about the greatest day of fear that is the day of Yawm al Qiyamah. And we forget about the day of accountability. And we forget about when we have to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to give an account of all our deeds. A day when hearts are being turned upside down and sights are going to be so transfixed that they can't even move. And people are going to be extremely terrified. We forget about that day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And you will find from among mankind are those people who take to worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they think that they worship, they love them so much, they love them with the love they're supposed to give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those who are believers, they love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stronger. Why is it stronger? It's simple common sense. Because if you take things besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you think about it, if you love more than one thing or more than one person, it means that you have to share your love. And if you were to share your love, it becomes a fraction of love you can only give to one person. So from the moment you have more than one, you start to share your love. And the moment it's broken up into fraction, it becomes less. But if you were to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way you're supposed to, we are just talking about loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. So if you're going to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only, He's the only one you're loving, then all your love will be focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is one, an absolute one. He's not divided into parts. And He's not more than one. So all the love that you have would all be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of being directed to different components or to different personnel or to different people or to different aspects. Loving one thing would get more love than when you love more than one. Basic common sense from a mathematical point of view. And that's why it's important for us to understand that because there are people who claim that they love their gods so much but if you were to love more than one, it starts to go into the fractions. So let us return with our love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the sharia, according to Islam. So for iman to be considered complete, there needs to be the firm belief in those three fundamental categories that I have mentioned. We need to ask ourselves, you know, are we allowed to prostrate to anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are we allowed to ask the dead saints or prophets or jinns or even the angels to help us? Can we supplicate to anyone else? Are we allowed to do things of that sort? Of course we are not. Can we say the kalima claiming that we only believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put our trust in other things, in other deities or even in pious scholars. No, we are not allowed to do that. Our focus should only be towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to know that the way that he has stipulated for us is the way through which we can understand him. And by understanding that path, by understanding that way, we will not be guilty of committing shirk. Deviating from the path, moving away from it, moving away from the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, moving away from the ayat of the Qur'an, is moving away from the essence, the true essence of understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and subsequently leading into shirk and committing shirk. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from these different aspects of shirk. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us greater understanding how we can be true and sincere to him.